Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We're really excited to have you here with us today because this is a really important discussion, and um, I just admire this organization so much. The Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption is with us today. Mary Ellen Smiley, Smalley is here, the Director of Brand and Cause Awareness. And oh my goodness, if your organization doesn't have a lot of causes, I don't know who does. I mean, your, your work is so important, Mary Ellen. We're going to be talking about adoption-friendly workplaces, what that means, what it looks like, why we should care in the nonprofit sector um, and and I think we're going to find that we haven't addressed this even enough within the nonprofit sector. So it's going to be a lot of fun to really go through this. Um, we have really a wonderful, wonderful co-host panel. And today I'm thrilled that we have Sherry Quam Taylor with us because Sherry's an adoptive mother of two girls. And so, I am. Yeah, Sherry. I was excited this topic was on the list, Julia, as someone who adopted two older girls uh, internationally. It's a little different, but uh, this is a near topic near and dear to my heart. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for coming on and, and joining this conversation. Um, it's really important, and I can't think of a better person to be talking about it with. Thank you. Thanks. Well, let's start by thanking our sponsors who have been with us for so long. A big thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, the nonprofit show, a Fundraising Academy with National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Inc., JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Thanks so much. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so we can talk to people like Mary Ellen Smalley. Mary Ellen, you have a big title and a lot of work that you have to do. Can you talk to us about where you sit within the organization and all the things that you do? Sure. So I have been lucky enough to be with the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption for more than eight years. And um, I sit on our marketing and development team, which is a collaborative group of people who work on all of our marketing communications and then also our fundraising. So development is, is uh, our formal language for fundraising. Um, and we have such a, a talented group of committed individuals who are really focused on our mission of increasing the number of foster care adoptions in North America. Um, and what falls under sort of my, my work is the earned media, which is public relations, having our CEO speak to amazing people like you and other journalists in the world, um, digital communications, which is email marketing, social media, our website presence, um, the design team sits under sits under me. Um, I am not a designer in any way, can't even draw a stick figure, but uh, helping them <laughs> with priorities and general branding, um, the visual and verbal storytelling of our brand. Um, you know, we do a lot of brand journalism. I'm so fortunate. I travel around the country um, through the United States and Canada, and I meet these amazing families who've adopted through the foundations programs and tell their stories. So that is pretty much our entire YouTube channel. And we use all of those stories and all our communications to our supporters, to general public, and um, our, our state partners and other adoption agencies that are our grantees, um, really as success stories, but also as you know, authentic lived experiences that incorporate the challenges, but also the joys of the foster care adoption experience. Um, and then adoption friendly workplace is a big piece um, of my role. I've been overseeing that that program since I started. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and public service awareness. That's our other big awareness driver. I produce those videos as well. Um, but AFW, I guess, is what we're here to talk about today. And it is it's such a program that's near and dear. Mr. Thomas started this conversation more than 30 years ago. He just really believed that adoption benefits were the right thing to do as families consider how they want to expand and recognizing that not every family is going to expand in the same way um, and just having equity um, for the different paths. And so while the foundation is primarily focused on foster care adoption, this program, um, Adoption Friendly Workplace, recognizes adoption benefits um, that that support all the types of adoption um, and foster parents. Um, and so, so we're really excited in some of the trends that we're seeing from best in class organizations. So talk to us about like what this looks 
like as a policy? And then Sherry and I are going to pepper you with a lot of questions. <laughs> In a nice way. <laughs> We recognize that obviously not every single organization can offer the exact same benefits. It's just, you know, based on size and revenue and things like that. Um, but what we're seeing overall and what's really exciting to us is that every year we have new companies that join and participate in the survey, which to us is showing more and more companies are offering these benefits, um, which is really the point of the program. Uh, we have a very robust toolkit on our website. So if you don't have a, if you do not have an adoption policy, uh, we have made it very simple for you to create one. Um, you can download it's completely free. We update it all the time. It's been vetted by HR minds. I mean, it's got everything in it. It really breaks down like the federal guidelines as well in terms of like FMLA. Um, so, you know, this year we just we just launched our top 100 um, best adoption friendly workplace list this morning for 2024. This is the 18th year for the survey, which is wow. amazing. Um, and we're so excited because the top two companies not only offer unlimited financial reimbursement, they offer incredibly generous paid leave policies. Um, so our top our top company again this year is Sparing Pharmaceuticals, which they were number one last year. It's, it's very difficult to number one off that offers unlimited financial reimbursement. Um, they offer 26 le weeks of paid leave. Our number two um, company, NVIDIA, which is a software company, uh, also offers unlimited financial reimbursement, and they offer 20 weeks of leave. Um, we have really robust and varied um, ranges, though, financial reimbursement, anything from $2,000 all the way up to unlimited. And then the paid leave piece is anywhere from, you know, two weeks to 26 weeks is the highest. Um, and what we're seeing, a trend that we're seeing that we love is that the best in class organizations are now putting foster parents under that umbrella leave and allowing them to also use that same amount of time. So we know like a lot of foster parents, uh, you know, they struggle to step up because you, it takes so much time when a child enters your home, there are things that must happen right away. Doctor's appointments, enrolling in school, if they're changing school districts, um, getting daycare set up, you know, it can be weeks before a daycare that's state certified for foster youth to be able to enter. So there's just a lot of things, moving parts and having that freedom and that time is really important. And then, you know, on the front end of foster care adoption, you know, the child sort of enters that home and you kind of need that time, just like when you would bring an infant home, like the moment the child is in the house, you need that bonding time, you need that adjustment time. It's not really after the adoption because oftentimes that's not for a year. So we really just, we love that families are being, you know, grouped together in this way and in, in really inclusive ways. And Mary Ellen, do you find that employers are maybe just like not thinking of this or like they don't know it's a thing? Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just curious, like, why doesn't everybody have this or is it just still on the upward trend? Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's, you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't have an employee who has come to you with um, that path, you know, maybe it's just something you've never considered. Um, you know, we hear a lot of times that the reason that an, that an organization created a policy is because an employee came to them and said, I, I want to become a foster parent or I have this foster youth and I want to adopt them and I need this time mm -hmm. or I want to adopt internationally and it's very expensive. Is there something that can be done? Um, same with private infant that can get costly. Um, and so we've heard from numerous organizations um, that have just done the policy because someone asks them to. And so that's what really what the toolkit is rooted in. It's just giving you a launching point. It's not prescriptive. Um, it's meant to be a guide. Obviously, every organization has, you know, is going to need to tweak um, the policy to make sense for them. And that's where their HR teams can really step in. But we, we know it's hard to aggregate a lot of information into one place. And so we just took that step. <laughs> wow. Um Sherry, go ahead, because we, we want to talk about these, the policy in a little bit. More. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I just have so many questions and I'm flashing back to think, oh my goodness, my, uh, the, the three weeks where we had off where two of them were in the other country, that this 26 weeks would be uh, incredible. 
Um, talk to me about the impacts of having a policy, you know, obviously on the employees, but maybe the organization as well. Sure. So we every five years, we do a foster care and adoption attitude survey where we survey um, people across the United States and Canada to like really learn what do they know about foster care? What do they know about foster care adoption? What do they know about private infant and international adoption and foster care in general? And what we learned is that 68% of Americans uh, noted that employer provided paid leave impacted or would impact their decision to adopt. Um, wow. And so we find that to just be like, that's it, right? Like that's the hook. <laughs> um, you know, Americans are saying, if we had the time, we would consider this option. And that's so important because there's 108,000 kids waiting to be adopted from foster care today. Mm -hmm. So there is an urgent need for families to be willing to step up and open their hearts and open their homes. And, you know, a big part of that is having a supportive community around them. And a piece of that is their workplace. So that's, that's just really, really important. Um, you know, and we, we have several families that um, who have adopted through our program and while foster care adoption in most cases is quite low cost, oftentimes the, the costs can be reimbursed after an adoption finalizes. That paid time off is very critical, um, especially when you have youth who have um, survived trauma. Uh, it's another transition for them. It, this is not an overnight fix. Um, and we've heard from multiple families who've adopted through our, our program whose, whose employers had generous benefits, that that was such a for them um, to be able to fully commit to that child for you know, 12 weeks and get them feeling really stable and getting them to move into, you know, that like bright future that they deserve. Wow. You know, you're, you're talking about so many amazing things. And I, I think that the, the, the takeaway for me is that people don't understand. And you, you said in the green room, something that was so chilling. And that was that, you know, most people that come forward and want to do this and believe in it, they don't understand. They don't know until they're in the process and how much support it really takes. Um, and Sherry, I, you know, and I, if this is too personal, just tell me, but as an adoptive parent, were you in that boat or were, were you fully, cause you're a very educated woman. You're in the nonprofit sector. <laughs> you should be like, you know, the perfect. Julia, I didn't know it all. No, you know what? I think like we've had this discussion so many times. Um, it, it's been a rewarding journey and a very challenging journey at times. And I think that we did all the classes, all the required, all the reading, all the books, all the talking, you know, bringing those people around us who had done it before. Man, it was still hard and it, it was very lonely at times. And so I just love that um, someone at a company is, is, is being brave enough, I guess, standing up and saying, hey, this is our journey we're going on. Could we put some sort of policy in place? Mm -hmm. And then maybe even having a community around that person to really help them when when it, it there are tough, tough weeks, months, years. Um, and community has been a huge part in somebody ha having a shared experience. So I love that people are speaking up and, and being those that kind of advocate for others. It's Absolutely. huge. You know, Mary Ellen, when we talk about starting a, a policy, how long do you think that this takes? I love that the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption has some templates and has some things that that you know we can go to. But what does this look like in your experience? Are people saying we're going to start this and it's going to launch in you know next quarter or three months or three days or in a year? What's your sense of this? It truly depends on the size of the organization. So we've had uh, smaller organizations come to us and they're able to implement it much more quickly um, than larger organizations. So years ago, when I was new here at the foundation, um, I was really lucky to travel to Walmart headquarters and talk to them. They wanted to start an adoption benefits mm -hmm. policy. You know, they have so many moving pieces and parts. They have people in various states. They have people who are part-time, hourly, store level employees, regional um, employees, headquartered employees. So, so many different layers and tiers to really think through on that, that it did take them quite a while to put something together. And their first um, policy out the, out of the gate 
is not the policy that they have now. And so it's evolved, right? And so, you know, they're on our top 100 list. They offer very robust, um, very robust um, policy benefits to, I believe, almost all their employees. So don't quote me on that. I'd have to check it. But um, but I, I know that they have evolved. I think they're a great example of, of getting something in place and just sort of using it as a launching pad. They've been amazing to work with. Um, you know, we have smaller, like uh, we worked with a boutique PR agency that was less than 20 employees. And so they were able to like very quickly implement what was going to work for them because they just didn't have as many layers. So it really just depends. Um, you know, we are happy to work with groups wherever they are. We've worked with groups who have policies and ask us to review them. Um, you know, I'm not an HR specialist. Uh, I can give the input of here's what other organizations have done, if this can be helpful. But what I would also really encourage organizations to do is to participate in our survey with whatever benefits you have. We'll get a free benchmark report. It will show you where you are up against all the other participants, where you are in your industry, where you are with um, organizations of your size. And then there is an opt-in database. And if you opt in to share your benefits in the database, you get access to all the other groups full benefits. Um, and we had a hundred companies opt in this year to that wow. database. So it's pretty robust. And these are organizations that are, you know, global, um, all the way down to, you know, 10 employees. And so there's certainly something in there that serves all levels, um, that you can really glean some helpful information from, and that's mm -hmm. coming from policies that are in action. So, you know, they're working, um, and that can be really helpful for a company that's just getting off the, you know, just starting out. And maybe all they have is two weeks of paid leave, right? And they, but they want to do more and they don't know where to go. Do the survey. Yeah. Everyone who completes the survey and offers any kind of benefit is listed as an adoption advocate. We want to celebrate that. We want to celebrate that you've started down that path. You may not make the top 100 your first year. It's really not about that. It's about celebrating that you recognize that not all families are formed in the same way. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know, I, I, I'm so anxious to go look at the, the list uh, of, of um, that just came out. You mentioned, um, I, you know, I, I started thinking even when you brought up the list, look, my husband worked for a very small boutique firm. So I love that you've even brought up this small PR firm because everybody can have some sort of policy. Uh, and they were loving and supportive, but, you know, it was also vacation days that, that purely we took. So uh, I love that there's big and small on there. Talk to us a little bit more about the survey and what we can, I mean, just, just digging deep what we can expect to see and um, be inspired by. Sure. So um, we have 18 new companies on the list this year, which is really exciting. Um, you know, our retention year to year is over 90%. So we love seeing those companies come back year over year. Companies like American Express and Fifth Third and Capital One, um, NVIDIA, Faring, obviously, top of the list. Um, they've been doing the survey for years. Uh, Walmart is back again for this year. We have so many like big names and and really small, you know, names too. We saw a surge this year in the healthcare industry. Hmm. I think we had four or five new healthcare um, organizations participate. And um, I think two of them made the top 100, I believe. So really excited about seeing that. Um, we would love to see in the future, you know, more government agencies um, take this survey and participate and let us know what they're offering in turn state level, county level, really interested in that. We'd love to see more nonprofits take advantage of this. And we know nonprofit, you know, we're in that space. We understand your, your policy is probably not going to be mirroring what a 100 company can offer. But again, I think it's just the recognition that these families are walking a different path, but they deserve the same time. And we understand too, like sometimes financial reimbursement is just not on the table. You know, if you don't have the revenue to support that, you know, but consider paid leave, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the other piece is that adoption benefits research has shown, um, they're just not used by everyone. The, a very small percentage of employees will ever request to use this. So even with the companies that are offering unlimited $35,000 a year, for an adoption, they're not paying that out to multiple employees a year. And 
in some cases, they're not paying it out to an employee at all in a year. Yeah. Um, and these are, you know, huge global brands. So the risk is low. I think there's there can be some hesitation around committing to giving $10,000 for an adoption and you think you're going to have to pay that to 60 employees. That's <laughs> That's probably not the reality of what's a great problem, you know, <laughs> um, it would be, it would be a great problem. <laughs> um, so I think it's just kind of understanding that it is a, a, a rarely, I don't want to say rarely, a not often used benefit, but it's so important. And I think it shows, you know, it's just the culture of inclusiveness, the, the culture of, of just accepting that everyone's kind of doing it their own way. Um, and I just think that's really important. So we're really excited about the new companies. We're excited that the um, of, we are seeing a 10% increase in the financial reimbursement average up, up to above $16,000 wow. uh, per adoption, which is amazing. We saw an increase in the paid leave for adoptive parents up um, to almost 10 weeks. And the same with foster care parents, we saw an increase of, um, of time given and they're almost up to 10 weeks in time as well. So you know, we're just, we continue to see the trends going up. We see more and more companies participating. You know, it's all good. Love it. You know, it, it is. It's so cool, Mary Ellen, to, to think that you are on this journey with the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption, um, w along with families in our country and understanding, you know, this process. Um, it's it's fascinating and I'm delighted that you remind us reminded us that Dave Thomas started this journey in this conversation 30 years ago, 30 years ago when nobody was talking about this. Um, and so it's really remarkable to think that you and your organization have taken this journey so, so far. I mean, I'm sure it seems like a slog, but in, in a short period of time to really change the, um, the mindset of, of a country is phenomenal. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It's slow and steady. <laughs> we, are, we are seeing, you know, more and more families considering foster care adoption. So for our mission, you know, that's critical. Um, I think it's, it's more of a conversation topic in pop culture as well. And it's, I think we're doing, great work around removing some of these like stigmas um, and helping people understand that kids in foster care are truly survivors. They are truly survivors of abuse or neglect. You know, we, like I said, the, the point of the foster care system is reunification. We want those families to have the resources to be able to come back together. But if they are not able to, you know, those children still deserve family. So, that's where we step in. And especially, you know, we primarily work with older children, teenagers, sibling groups, and children with special needs, um, because we know those are the demographics that's most likely to linger in care, most likely to need, you know, specific help um, finding the right family. And, you know, our program focuses on finding a family within the network of known people to them. So, you know, parents of friends or a, uh, a relative that maybe wasn't in their life that they or they knew of, or, you know, kind of lost touch with um, mentors or people from church or people from the community or a teacher or a coach. We just did a story um, a few months ago with a family in Kentucky and uh, the, it was a sibling group of four and the second oldest child sent his teacher a message on his Chrome that he needed to be adopted. And it was the day after his parents parental his biological family's parental rights had been terminated and this teacher you know did some digging and figured out what had happened and went home to his wife and said you know I've got this kid in my class what can we do and she said yes and he said well there's there's four of them said, yes again <laughs> talk like, about yes, a sibling group yeah <laughs> and you know they went from a family of two to a family of six pretty quickly um, and, you know, she had said like Amazon was our best friend. We had to get like more pots and pans and towels and they ended up having to move actually. But, you know, so just, yeah. you know, there's a lot of really good people out there who are yeah. just, just opening their hearts and to the idea of this and, you know, they connected and they fall in love with these kids and, you know, it's a challenge though. They, they, they come with you know, there's trauma there. And that's part of the foster care parent training, you know, is to learn how to help them through that. 
Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Mary Ellen Smalley, you are one of those amazing folks in our system helping share the story you know we need people like you and the dave thomas foundation to help educate and bring the conversation forward um, because if we don't if we're not talking about it we can't really engage and so i'm so delighted that you are here with us i have seen your work it is beautiful beautiful work and if you um, are a nonprofit out there and you want to see what the highest level of of communication is go to the Dave Thomas Foundation uh, website. It's DaveThomasFoundation.org and nobody does it better. You all have uh, in compelling stories, um, but realistic stories about different people. And then all of the policy side, I think is riveting. You, you seem to be able to weave those two together. And so congratulations. Um, it's inspiring. On yeah, it really is. And I think we can learn a lot from uh, the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption, no matter what we're doing. You know, I think that's one of the things, Sherry, is that they they guide what best in class work looks like to me. I mean, I really, right. you know, as everybody a, can move the needle. Like you said, big or small, it makes a big difference for the the large number of kids who still need families. Yeah. It's amazing. Mary Ellen Smalley, Director, Brand and Cause Awareness. And oh my, what a cause and what a brand you have. <laughs> so we are just so delighted that you joined us today in a very meaningful conversation. Again, check out DaveThomasFoundation.org um, for the uninitiated. Yes, Dave Thomas was the gentleman that started the Wendy's uh, franchise hamburger franchise empire and so um, his story is compelling and you can learn more about it on their website as well because um, he's a man that led with his heart and mm. really changed the trajectory of, of a conversation in our nation so mary ellen wow you like kicked off my week in such a great way thank yeah. you yeah well thank you so much for having me it was nice speaking with both of you Oh my goodness. So we're all, I'm headed to the website and out to get a frosty after this, because now I'm craving my frosty. Uh, but last time, a big thank you. Uh, I'd buy frosties for all these people. Uh, <laughs> Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, uh, the Nonprofit Show. Uh, we want to thank Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time part controller, Staffing Boutique, Inc., JMT Consulting, and last but not least, Nonprofit TED Talk. Thanks so much for your support. It's been amazing. You know, every day we end our episodes with this mantra. And I always say this, ladies, it means different things to me every day. And, and today it's really profound. And, and the message goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. And I think you can stay well if your organization, this is a little editorial, if your organization has an adoption policy. Right, Sherry? Agreed. Agreed. I'm headed to the website. <laughs>